This is the weirdest thing I have seen all month. Maybe even in the past two months. And I know that's a hyperbolic statement to make, but upon reading this, you're probably gonna feel the same way. Unless, I don't know, you've got some unicorn factory out there that you're seeing. But either way, today we are talking about the Detroit Red Wings AHL affiliate, the Grand Rapids Griffins. And not one particular player or a prospect on this team that is doing a thing that's really good or really bad or whatever. Nothing like that. Today we are focusing on one game. You see, there are so many Red Wings video-related topics we could explore at this time in the season, but this one might just go out there and take the cake for being the most peculiar thing on the chopping block. Last night, the Grand Rapids Griffins had a game against the Cleveland Monsters, the Columbus Blue Jackets AHL affiliate. This game was interesting because Carson Meyer of Cleveland ended up getting the first two goals of the game, with the second goal coming seven minutes into the third period. With 14 minutes to go in the entire hockey game, the Griffins were down by two, and it wasn't looking good. Until... Give it about nine minutes after the second Carson Meyer goal, you had yourselves a power play tally by a prospect that everybody in Detroit is super excited for. Simone Edvinson goes out there with a power play goal, his second of the season, assisted by Cross Hanas and Taro Hirose to bring the Griffins within one. Then, later on in the frame, with 27 seconds to go in this third period, Tim Gettinger gets his second, assisted by Yoel Esperon and Hiroshi. So there you go, Taro Hiroshi getting on the board twice. Two great assists there to help the Griffins tie this game up. But then in overtime, 46 seconds into the overtime, you had Cleveland's Brendan Gauntz scoring the overtime winner on the power play to give Cleveland the win. This was assisted by Trey fix and Nick Blankenberg, two names that I'm honestly kind of intrigued to seeing why they're in the AHL. Like, I loved Nick Blankenberg and his play from last year, so very interesting to see him there. But the thing is, when it comes to that penalty, that in which allowed the Monsters to score on the power play in overtime... It actually was given to the Griffins right after Tim Gettinger's tying goal in the third period. Take a look at this. 1933 of the third. Benchminer, served by Cross Hannes. Objects on the ice, spectators, two-minute power play. Okay, now what the hell does that mean? What is going on here? Well... Take a look at the Grand Rapids Griffins and their Twitter account. They made a statement last night after this game, after this overtime loss. The Griffins staged a memorable comeback against Cleveland tonight at Van Andel Arena, scoring twice in the final 304 to force overtime. Unfortunately, the actions of a few attendees erased our team's momentum and cost us a chance at victory. They had purchased foam pucks as part of our long-running Throw for Dough charitable fundraiser, but chose to throw these pucks onto the ice after our game-tying goal, resulting in a delay of game penalty to Grand Rapids. Cleveland scored on the ensuing power play in overtime, costing the Griffins a second point in the standings and a three-game winning streak on home ice. While we are proud of our team's resilient effort and the support of our loyal fans, we can't say the same about these nine individuals, out of a crowd of nearly 6,000 who caused this unprecedented situation. Several of them were immediately ejected from the arena, and the owner of every puck thrown has been identified and will be addressed. Furthermore, our organization is actively looking at all possible changes for this promotion to ensure that this activity does not happen at a future game. And this is where things get really weird. Firstly, the Grand Rapids Griffins are blaming their fans on this loss. That is literally what they're doing in this statement. They're saying, hey, we got a penalty because some of our fans made weird decisions and we lost because of it. That's their fault. That's these nine guys' fault. That's not our fault that we weren't able to kill the power play or score in overtime or whatever. Nah, 
We lost this game. We lost this comeback. We lost an extra point in the standings. We lost our three game winning streak because of the fans in the building. And while that may not technically be wrong, it is a very strange thing to immediately say. And secondly, the fact is, there are penalties being given out to fans now? Teams are getting penalized for fans throwing stuff onto the ice in a stoppage of play? This is really interesting because it is to my understanding, my very lackluster understanding, that when stuff gets thrown onto the ice during a play, that's normally when you'll see penalties be given out. And it doesn't happen often in that capacity. You'll see jerseys get thrown onto the ice. You'll see in Detroit that octopus get thrown out onto the ice. You'll see stuff get thrown onto the ice all the time. Hats for hat tricks, etc., etc. But none of these things usually go on during a play. But when they do, that's when, you know, penalties are going to be given out. If you chuck something on the ice when the opposing away team is getting a breakaway or whatever, like, that is such a weird and unique circumstance that you never see it. And when you do see stuff get tossed onto the ice, it almost never results in a direct power play. So for this Grand Rapids Griffin situation to happen in the AHL, it just feels so weird since we're accustomed to stuff being thrown onto the ice in different capacities in the NHL. Of course, I'm not going to say it's always appropriate. Like, I'm not going to say that the Florida Panthers fans chucking all their food onto the ice is appropriate. That throwing all their water bottles and garbage like they did in the postseason earlier this year, that's not appropriate. Like, even tossing jerseys, that's not really appropriate either. But it's something that we know happens. So, when it comes to this foam puck thing, the play is stopped. The game was not going like, hey, it's a tying goal. Tim Gettinger scores and the play is dead. Everybody's celebrating for that to result in a power play for the opposing team. That is weird. And I don't think I've ever seen that before. And the Griffins made it even weirder by blaming the fans, calling them out in particular on social media. And I'd been hearing some things about the Griffins saying that Friday nights are like cheap beer nights in the games or whatever. Like, I don't know, there was some stuff going on that people were saying, yeah, like, this may be the last time they do that. Maybe they wouldn't want to incentivize any extracurricular behavior in the future by giving out cheap beers. Or maybe this foam puck thing, they'll go out there and address it some other way. Like... Can you say you've ever seen something like this, where a team specifically calls out not the fans in general, but nine particular people that were in the crowd as to why they lost the hockey game? Like, I can understand when teams go out there and make statements about incidents that happen in their arenas. Like, if there's a fight that breaks out or there's somebody that gets hurt, teams don't even need to go out there and talk about it. But I can understand if they do that. But this is so different. The Griffins are straight up blaming their fans for a loss, and that is, like, the weirdest thing. Weirdest, weirdest thing. The Griffins, just in case you are interested in seeing, they're playing against the Rockford Ice Hogs again today, so, hey, if you want to catch up with Grand Rapids, they're playing again, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about the Grand Rapids Griffins straight up blaming their fans for their loss yesterday? That's the weirdest sentence I've said in a long time, but I want you to let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you're a Grand Rapids Griffins attendee or you were watching this game, what are your thoughts? How do you feel about the situation where foam pucks getting thrown onto the ice resulted in a penalty for the Griffins that carried over into overtime and that in which caused the Cleveland Monsters to score? Do you think this was really the way to go? Do you think that blaming the fans is the most appropriate way to go about things here? And do you think the Griffins have a point? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 99. And bye.